Nick, would you explain the difference between the lab-grown ruby and emerald that you sell and a typical synthetic gem? It's very simple. 99.9% um, .9 of all, say, corundums or rubies that are grown uh, or rather made in laboratories are essentially a bunch of chemicals in a crucible that are heated by a hydrogen flame that melts into something called a boule. It's a very glass-like material. It's not a crystal structure. It's a um, material that is very hard, has the same chemical composition, but not the crystal lattice. And it's the crystal lattice which is essential for a gem to have its uh, electromagnetic characteristics. It is because a crystal structure grows with billions of atoms in alignment, uh, a bit like a laser as you were, that there's a possibility for the free conductivity to flow through that crystal structure. And when you have a higgledy-piggledy amalgam of material, uh, the energy is pretty much locked into that material. It's why gems are, or why crystals are so unique and used for, a, uh, for healing and uh, electromagnetic purposes. And it's a s difference that is essential for people to understand. It's the fact that they're crystals, the fact that they are grown using this remarkably intelligent process that Mother Nature has uh, refined to make something truly unique. Synthetics, uh, I have enormous disdain for. Uh, I mean, I've experimented with them with an open mind. I've made uh, whole bangles out of just synthetic gems, played around with them with friends and myself, never sold them thinking that maybe color and hardness of material had something to do with the relationship of uh, affecting a change in the person's electromagnetic body. Unfortunately, it didn't really have the effect I was looking for. Uh, I found some interesting things out, but nothing compared to the crystal material that's grown uh, in the laboratory in the area of ruby and emerald. Now, of course, there are some rubies that are grown as crystals, but not in an identical manner to Mother Nature, and people sell them, and I'm very against them because I don't find them to have the amplification, the potency to carry the required similar signature that their natural counterparts convey. And it's really actually quite a deep science just studying um, laboratory grown crystals and synthetic processes. There's a lot of pros and cons and rationale that you have to develop over the years of study that very few people um, are interested in or um, utilize to use as a tool for astrological purposes. So it's something that I, I haven't, I've trod very carefully over because obviously the last thing I want is a karmic shadow following me having betrayed a lot of people with my lack of discrimination if it be in promoting this material. And uh, I wholeheartedly support laboratory-grown uh, emeralds and rubies. And, you know, they're very inexpensive. It's not really a financial rationale to say that's why we promote them. It's because of the scientific information relating to their composition and uh, how they are grown. And uh, I'm very happy that a lot of people now do agree with me, uh, whereas at the beginning it was a huge wall of resistance.